Okay, so we were looking at uh, this uh, tutorial problem in the last, uh, you know, uh, lecture. Um, uh, so this uh, basically concerns uh, a system where you have um, um, particles which are cuboids, um, and the dimensions of the particles are given. Um, and it is mentioned that these are core shell particles. The core is made up of, uh, you know, core is hollow. Okay, and the shell is a silica cell. Okay, um, <coughs> and what has been done is they've added PNPAM particles um, of 65 nanometer <coughs> um, radius, uh, and you've been uh, they're added to induce <coughs> depletion attraction, and you've been asked to calculate a few things. Uh, that is, uh, make you know uh, some approximations and calculate the strength of uh, depletion attraction as a function of separation distance uh, in units of uh, kbt and what has been given to you is also that uh, uh, the concentration of the depletants okay or the pinipam particles is 6.9 10 power 20 and the temperature is given to be uh, 298 kelvin uh, the second bit of question is uh, on increase of the temperature of the dispersion from 298 Kelvin to 40 degree centigrade. Uh, the pin pinipa microgel particles are known to shrink. That means, if they are bigger in size, they will become smaller and what would happen to the strength of depletion interaction. Okay, that is what is being given to you. And uh, what was also mentioned was the, the depletion volume was given something like this. Okay. Um, so, what we looked at is a case where uh, if you look at uh, um, what we have derived in the class, uh, we had you know uh, two plates, right. Uh, just going to delete that, okay. We had two plates and uh, and we talked about what is the depletion volume, right. That is the, the region between the plates is the depletion volume. Now, if you look at this case, uh, because of this roundedness, okay, because these are cuboids, you have a, a roundedness at these ends, uh, edges, and because of which you know the depletion volume is going to be different. Okay, uh, you see in this case the depletion volume was something like the area of the plates. Okay, multiplied by multiplied by the separation distance, right? If sigma, okay, is the the size of the uh, polymer that we are putting, sigma minus h was the depletion volume, right? Where h is the center, to which where h is a the separation distance, right? So now, what we are going to do in this particular problem is we are going to assume that these are perfect cubes because we don't have we don't know what is delta, right? The delta is the roundedness. We don't have a way of calculating this, so we don't know this. Okay. Uh, therefore, what we will do is we will assume that the the face of the cubes are flat in which case I can actually go ahead and use the expression that we developed for the depletion interaction between two flat surfaces. right? So, we had mentioned that in W of h it, it depends on this is the osmotic pressure and that is a. So, this is per unit area right if you remember the way we did the calculation this W of h is the interaction energy as a function of separation distance per unit area. right? So, therefore, I have the osmotic pressure, I can calculate that because N b has been given to me, the number concentration of depletants in the system is given and that is a thermal energy. Sigma minus h is going to be the separation distance okay? uh, and of course, that is when h is less than sigma and for h uh, greater than or equal to sigma, your the depletion interaction is going to be 0. Okay? So, this is a simple question. So, what I have done is I have taken of course, I should go on and then do it for 65 nanometers, right? That is the um, uh, 2 times 69 nanometers, right? That is the distance of separation, okay, can be anywhere from 0 to 2 times the size of the size of PNPAM, okay? When, when I say 2 times size, 2 times the radius of P. Nipam particles. Okay, that's the range over which 
the interactions should be operative. Okay. Um, so, therefore, I know what is h and I can calculate sigma minus h right that simply is uh, 2 times the radius of the pinipam particles minus h that is the separation distance okay. and that multiplied by a is going to give me what is the depletion volume right and the osmotic pressure force is given by p is equal to n k t n has been given n is given as 6.9 6.9 into 10 power 20 number per meter cube that has been given right and k b t is a thermal energy that is 298 times uh, k t which is 1.38 into 10 power minus 23 right. So, I can calculate this uh, of course, you know it has to be minus right, this has to be minus p v overlap because it is a attractive interaction. Now, that I know w of h I can scale everything with k b t and you know you get numbers which are which are like this. So, uh, this calculation actually what I have done is I have taken uh, sigma to be 2.5 it's uh, 6.5 itself okay that is the calculation I have done. I have taken sigma itself to be 6.5. So, I have taken some values of um, h going from 0 0.65 all the way up to 6.5 okay. and this is the value of sigma minus h you get that is overlap volume. So, therefore, you can see that the depletion interaction you know varies from about 0 k b t or 0 k t when the separation distance is 6.5 that is sigma is equal to 6.5 and when the separation distance becomes okay, h is 6.5 when the separation distance becomes 0 0.65 okay the thermal energy when you this becomes uh, 7.22 okay so this interaction energy is uh, several times kbt right therefore if they were to reach such a separation distance you know the, the particles will be attracted to each other and the energy corresponding to that attraction is given by 7.2 kbt okay and this is much larger than the thermal energy Therefore, we can say that you know once they stuck okay, the Brownian motion would be the energy due to Brownian motion would be not sufficient to pull them apart right. Um, now, I have done a similar calculation. So, I am going to assume that so again the size information is not given right 40 degree centigrade we know that they shrink they become okay, it's 298 Kelvin or 25 degree centigrade right. So, the size is you know say 65 nanometer. Okay. So, we know that you know it is going to shrink uh, I do not know what is the data for the size at 40 degree centigrade. So, I am going to assume that it is you know 40 nanometer okay, if I assume that okay, I can do a, again a similar calculation. Okay, again what I have done is I have taken sigma to be 4 and I am showing the calculation here. Okay. Uh, so, therefore, uh, similarly uh, what you can you know what you can see is that the interaction energy right it, it varies from okay uh, at least over the distance that I have taken it varies from 0 0.98 to about 4.4 kbt. If I plot uh, both the data okay one for the 40 degree centigrade and the other one for 298 Kelvin what you will you know, this is what is expected right. So, I would expect that the the because of the fact that the size of the pin pump particles are larger at 298 Kelvin okay, you would expect a, that you know the range over which you know the these interactions are going to be effective is much larger. So, both the range plus the magnitude okay, of the depletion interaction at 25 degree centigrade are higher compared to both, both the, the range and the magnitude at 40 degree centigrade where the, the particle essentially shrink right that is what uh, uh, these calculation would show you ok. Um, yeah, so, that is a, a simple problem um, uh, in which you can think about uh, one good thing to note is that you know the number that you are getting right. So, they, they seem reasonable right um, 
you know typically when people talk about attractive strength uh, uh, they talk about you know some numbers which are you know tens of kbt or you know several tens of kbt okay uh, if you get some values which are like you know 1000 kbt or something like that you know they, they, they are not they are unreasonable okay so typically when you do this calculation you should look at you know what is the the attractive strength as a function of uh, uh, you know you, sh you should always scale it with kbt or kt and you just look at the numbers okay that will give you an idea as to whether these interactions are uh, uh, kind of more dominant over van der waals okay and and are they comparable okay so, so you know an idea like that would help you guys to understand uh, you know the the system that you're dealing with better okay uh, that's about uh, the depletion um, interactions okay uh, uh, and uh, that brings to the end of uh, colloid polymer mixtures.